I think we should start a Scream King list and Justin Long should be at the top of that list. So today I'm going to be talking about 2001's Jeepers Creepers. Uh, it is starting Justin Long and Gina Phillips. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is going over the gore versus the bore, which is the good and the bad. And I will be uh, giving points to each side, depending on what I like about the movie. It could be anything from a scene. Um, it could be anything from a character choice or just anything in the movie that I find that was good or that was bad. When the movie starts, you see brother and sister Trish, and they're going to visit their mom on spring break, and they're driving on this really old highway that's just a one-lane highway. And uh, the first score point that this movie is going to get is actually the fact that the brother and sister dynamic is not thrown in your face too much. They just say it in the beginning, and it only takes about five minutes for the story to begin. And just from those five minutes, you believe that they are brother and sister. I like their back and forth that they um, banter there. They're arguing, they're laughing, they're telling jokes. She makes fun of his dirty clothes. There's like little things that brother and sisters do. They even have a license plate games that they do. And I know that a lot of siblings make up their own little games like that. So I like how kind of realistic that they made that part. So that's going to be the first gore point. The second gore point that, the, that this movie will receive is actually from the fact that the movie actually starts really fast. It doesn't take 30, 40 minutes for character development to happen. Uh, as soon as you meet the characters, literally five minutes in, you see the truck from the creeper chasing them. And the movie starts right then and there. So as they're driving down this road, there's this scary truck that starts to get close to them. Uh, and it's speeding. And it gets really close to them and starts honking at them. And they're just like telling them to go around them. And this truck's not listening. So it actually rams them. And it's this giant, really loud truck. And it has this like really scary horn. And it's just going at him and scaring them. And eventually he runs them off the road. And they don't know who this person is. They're just a little freaked out about it. Um, it's like a really old rusty truck. Uh, it's really it's really well done in this movie I can't say that for the rest of the movies But in this one the truck actually gets another gore point because it's actually one of the biggest things that made this movie so popular When Derry and Trish get back on the road They pass this really old church and on the side of the church They actually see the truck that was trying to run him off the road and they see this uh, Character that's wearing like an undertaker cosplay. He has the hat. He has the trench coat and everything and it appears that he's pulling out something out of his truck that looks like a body wrapped in bed sheets. Um, the next gore point that this movie will get actually comes from this scene because you see the creeper from the character's perspective and it's done to where it's far away enough that you don't know whether it's a creature or a human and you don't know whether those are bodies or what he's throwing down there so you kind of see the character's perspective and actually really enjoy that scene. So after seeing this they keep going and they stop on the side of the road to think about their options and what they're gonna do about the situation. Uh, as they're doing that, they actually see the truck pass uh, the street that they're on, and it's going the opposite way of the church. So what they decide to do, Derry actually has the bright idea to go back and investigate whether those were bodies or not. So they drive back to the church, and they get a flashlight, and it starts shining down the tunnel, but it's so dark in there that they can't see anything. So he tries to go in deeper, and uh, his sister's holding his legs, but a rat appears, and it scares him down, and then it goes into this really weird long shot of him falling for like a really long time and then he hits the floor in slow motion. I'm not sure why they did that. Um, this scene won't get any good points or bad points just because it's not too cliche but it's, it didn't do anything to hurt or make the movie better. So once Derry is down there, uh, this is where the movie gets his first bore point and the reason being is the way that the bodies look down there. So the first person he sees is the person that he saw wrapped in a bed sheet. He opens it and it is indeed a human being. And it appears like he's still alive. He's still trying to say something. And his appearance looks like he has baby powder on his face and like purple lips that just makes him look really weird. And that's not even the worst part. Once he starts investigating the rest of them, you see the roof and the ceiling and the walls and everything. They're covered in dead bodies, but they all look like plastic, like mannequins. And I just never liked the way the bodies looked here. I know that later on in the movie, they say something about there's no way those bodies should still be... Um, like bodies that should be decomposing by this point. So I'm guessing he covers them in something But they still just look really cheesy to me. So that's gonna be the first bore point from here We actually get a great scene which will get the next gore point So here we see Trish keeping guard outside to make sure that the creeper doesn't come back So she's just standing in front of their car waiting for the truck to to come back and warn Derry to get out of there so 
she's standing in the position where she's facing us or she's looking in our direction and we get this really great scene where behind her you actually see some lights some car lights that are coming and approaching her so it does build up the tension really well here because she doesn't see what you're seeing and it's it might be the truck approaching that she's waiting for once she realizes that there's a truck coming she goes into her car and tries to start it and it won't start but when the truck approaches it's actually just a farm truck so it wasn't the creeper when she's sitting in the car trying to turn it on and the truck passes um, you actually see Derry appear and do a jump scare on the side of the window of the car which is kind of cliche now I don't know if in 2001 it was as cliche as it is now so it won't get a bore point but it was a little bit of a cliche jump scare so after this they actually do go down to the local diner and they want to call the police and um, while they're at the diner they get a call from this psychic lady which this is where it's going to get the biggest bore point in my opinion because I just never been a big fan of psychic characters in movies like people that can tell the future can tell what's gonna happen in certain movies that don't necessarily need to be there um, so she calls them and instead of just saying like hey I know something bad's gonna happen to you be careful blah blah, blah. now she just kinda goes into uh, loud screaming contest with them is like have you seen the cats have you heard the song have you done this blah 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 and it just she just doesn't help our character she kind of scares them even more and they just hung up on her while they're doing this the, sh the cops actually show up and then they're talking to the police and while they're doing that a local person actually comes to them and says is that your car out there because there's somebody going through it when they go out there all their belongings are spread all over the parking lot and somebody tells them that there was actually a man holding all of Derry's dirty laundry and sniffing it and that it looked like he was enjoying it. So whenever this happens, um, they tell the police like, hey, this is the guy that we were telling you about. Do you believe us now? I can take you to where this uh, where the church is. So the police decide to follow Derry and Trish. While they're following Derry and Trish, um, the police, you hear something land on top of their, their roof. So from the perspective of, of Derry and Trish's car, you actually see behind them and you see that the creeper has landed on top of the police car. So to this point, you don't know whether the creeper is a human or a monster. And this is kind of your first taste of saying like, okay, this is actually more supernatural than what a human could do because he's just standing on top of the car while it's driving at full speed. And he actually reaches over and grabs the passenger cop and just snatches her up and like throws her out of the car. And then he does the same to the, the driving police officer, but he actually cuts his whole head off and rolls it. And then Derry and Trish actually see this and they stop and they go investigate the creeper is actually in the driver's seat and it's kind of like a funny comedic scene for the creeper it's the only one we get in the whole movie but he gets out of the police car and he's actually whistling the jeepers creepers theme song as he's walking towards the police officer's head he picks up the head and starts sucking on his tongue which is a really weird visual for our main characters to see because they don't know what's going on yet and after he does this, he eats his tongue, and then he goes to his car and throws the, the body in the truck, and then he closes the door, and then he comes back, and he opens it again, and you, you're looking at it from the inside of the truck's perspective. He opens the door and just throws the cop's head in there like if it was a soccer ball, which is kind of like a funny moment for the creeper from the sitting in the car for no reason to whistling to doing this little scene. After this, you don't get none, nothing comedic about it. After this, it's just kind of... He just goes crazy on a murder spree. So Derry and Trish actually drive away and they go to the nearest farmhouse and an old lady comes out and she's already holding a shotgun. So while they're trying to explain to her what's going on, the creeper actually appears on the side of them by a cornfield. So while the creeper is standing there, the lady tells him that he has 10 seconds to get out of her property or she's going to shoot him. She aims the gun at him and he just kind of stands there and she does shoot. So the creeper, this is the first time we actually see him fly because when he gets shot, he jumps up and lands in the lady's roof. And you can tell that something happens to where he goes inside and all her cats are actually screaming, which is something that the, the psychic lady had mentioned. But like I said, it kind of didn't matter because we we're gonna get to this point regardless. And then the lady runs in there to protect her cats. So the following scene is actually one that I really enjoy because after everything, you hear a couple of shots and then you just hear silence. From their perspective, you actually see the lady approaching the door, but you can tell that something's off with her. And as she's approaching the door, the camera zooms out. You see the creeper behind her. And you actually see that he took the shotgun and he penetrated her body and he's like lifting her up and he's walking her towards the door like a mannequin. So I really like this scene. And then he just kind of tosses her over and starts going after them. And then Derry and Trish actually get back in the car and the creeper gets in front of the car. So 
One of the biggest bore points that I'm also going to give this movie is the fact that I don't understand the level of intelligence of the creeper. So earlier when the lady told him that she was going to shoot him, he just stood there and took the shot. I don't know if he doesn't know what a gun is, but coming back every 23 years, 23 years ago before this movie, people already had guns. And 23 years before that, they already had guns. So at some point, somebody had to have shot at him. But we can forgive that part. But then this next part, he's just standing in front of the car. They try to run him over and he jumps over the car. Then they try it again in reverse and he jumps over it again. But then the third time that they go, he just lets the car hit him. He goes flying and then lands. And now he's like really damaged and hurt. So what Trish does is she reverses and runs him over and then does it again. And she could have kept going, but then Derry for some reason just tells her to stop there and to leave. And then you see this other great scene where you see the creeper's dead body, or not dead body, he's just hurt. But you see his leg and you can see the tire marks and everything there. So you can tell that his leg is crushed and like some of his body is actually really hurt. And this is the first time that you actually see him expand his wings and you can tell that, okay, so this is like some kind of bat creature. But the reason why I'm giving the board to the, the first part of the scene is because he stood in front of a car and got hit and he stood in front of a shotgun and got shot. So I don't understand like the level of intelligence that he has because then later on he does some things that are like really smart. So Derry and Trish drive up to the nearest police station and while they're there they're trying to explain to the cops what's going on and while they're explaining to them the psychic lady comes in and she tells them kind of like the synopsis of the character how he comes back every 23 years how he has to eat a body part to uh, replenish his that he'd lost or is damaged. Um, so this is the part that I learned I don't understand why she's here because after this you see a police officer walking through the cells and he sees two inmates that are terrified and they kind of nod over and the police kind of looks over at what they're nodding at and it's the creeper eating an inmate's legs and then you see his leg get better. So we could have gotten this whole story just based on this scene alone but the psychic lady is just kind of there to give us the context of it when we didn't need it like if we were dumb and we didn't understand the movie I guess. After this, the creeper regenerates every body part that was damaged when he got run over, and he's back to full health again. So what he does here, he just takes on a whole police station by himself, which is, again, I don't understand his level of intelligence. But we do get some really great scenes, because you see him hanging from a ceiling, and then there's a few cops in line, and one of them walks over, and he turns around, and then the creeper drops down, and he actually punches a hole through his chest. And then when he removes his hand... The camera pans down to the hole and you kind of see the other police officers flashlights flashing through the the flashing through the hole in his chest and that's a pretty cool scene right there um and then after this you just hear a bunch of shots you don't see what happens after this but you just know that the creeper most likely got all the cops while they're in trish are trying to find a spot to hide they actually get into an interrogation room and there's actually a double-sided window and then the creeper finds his way there and he's actually on the other side of the window and while they're arguing, there's this weird scene because you can't hear what they're saying. And it's just silence and they're just like tugging on each other. But then the creeper breaks through and grabs Derry. So while he's holding Derry, he backs up against the window. And Trish is just telling him like, please take me instead. And the creeper's not listening to any words that they're saying. A bunch of police show up and they're all aiming their guns at him. And at this point, I kind of think that they should have not revealed the wings when they did, when they were at the car scene, because you wouldn't have known that he could fly. So I feel like had they saved the wing part to here when he's holding Derry, and they think, you know, okay, he's backed up against the corner, there's nowhere for the creeper to go, Derry's gonna be safe, and then boom, he just brings out his wings and flies away. I feel like it would have been more of a shock, but the fact that they did it earlier, you kind of knew what was gonna happen. So the creeper expands his wings, and you just see him fly off through the window and the last scene from Trish that you see is actually her just looking up at the sky and her brother basically disappear into the night. Um, after this, before the movie ends, the final scene is actually where it's zooming in through this ab abandoned factory. All you hear is Derry screaming, which is why I, I say um, Justin Long should be the ultimate scream king because he has some crazy screams here. Uh, so obviously he's getting tortured or hurt in any way, but yeah, he's he's screaming his lungs out. And then the final shot of the movie is actually Derry, like his face, and he doesn't have his eyes anymore. It looks like his back of his head is completely gone. And you get this final, I don't want to say jump scare because he doesn't like pop up at you. He just kind of slowly rises and you see that the creeper is behind him and he's he has Derry's eyes in his head. And that's how the movie ends.
At the end, Jeepers Creepers ends with a total of 13 gore versus 4 boar points, giving us a total of plus 9.